What's up guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at this iPhone 12 which has a broken screen. You can see the LCD is broken as well as the glass at the bottom right here. We're going to be taking a look at what goes into replacing the screen while retaining the True Tone functionality. True Tone is a feature on the iPhone that changes sort of the color of the screen depending on the lighting of the area that you're currently in. But this is a feature that gets lost when you replace the screen with a new one. And also in the settings of the phone, you get a warning that it's not a original part. So we're going to take a look at how we can go about replacing the screen on this phone while retaining True Tone and removing that message. So you'll need a chunk of tools for this. Not all of these are necessary. It just sort of makes your life easier. You're obviously going to need a screen and a proper waterproof seal for the phone that you're working on. And you're going to need some kind of like suction cup. You don't need this whole jig here. This just sort of makes your life a bit easier. You can just use a suction cup along with a pry tool or something like this. It's nice to have a board holder or a chip holder to clean off the old touch I see from the original screen. I also have some frame glue remover. This is just to help remove the old glue when we take off the original screen. We also have some of these little protective stickers here, which is gonna help us protect the front camera and sensors from dust. I have a heat mat here to help us heat up the front glass of the screen to make it a bit easier to take it off. And this here is a JC V1SE programmer. We also need a compatible attachment for this. And this is a true tone board for the iPhone 12 through 15. And we need this to essentially read the old serial numbers from the original screen and write them to the new one because Apple. Now, obviously none of this is required. You can just replace the screen, but you are gonna get those warnings. The information about this is pretty spread out online. So I figured I'd make sort of an ultimate guide. I'll also add here, if you plan on replacing the touch IC in order to get rid of the warning message, you're gonna want a few extra tools. So the touch IC is right here. And you can see this has a sticker on it that says transferable IC chip to make it easier for you to put the new one on or put the original one on rather. So if you don't have that and you're just replacing it with a screen that has underfill, you're gonna to want to use a grinding pen and this will allow you to safely grind off the old touch IC without having to use so much heat on the new screen and damaging the LCD. And speaking of damaging the new LCD, you really want to get yourself a bit of metal like this that we can slip underneath here when we're removing this and soldering the new one onto the screen to protect the LCD from heat. You're also gonna want some leaded solder paste like this that melts at 183 degrees Celsius. Again, we're using this so that we don't have to apply so much heat to put the chip on the screen. We're also gonna want some sort of reballing stencil, whether it be a universal one or one that is designed for the phone. It has a little bend through it because it got damaged in shipping. I tried to take out the bend, so hopefully we'll be able to still use this. Otherwise we can use the universal one. And then you're also gonna want a BGA tool with a thin circular or square type thing like this. And you're gonna want some sort of pointy scraping thing to get the underfill out from around the original touch IC. So let's move on to opening the phone and getting started with the repair. So I've got this heated mat here, heated up to 70 degrees Celsius now. And we're just going to go ahead and shut the phone off. And I'm gonna set the timer here for two minutes. The phone's off now, so let's pop it down on the heating mat. All right, so with the phone nice and warmed up here, we're gonna take out the pentalobe screws from the bottom of the phone. So I'm just gonna place this in the jig so it doesn't turn on. And I'm just going to begin to tighten this until we get it touching the thing here. We can sort of help it along with a little bit of alcohol. So you can see without prying up at all even, it's just sort of pulling the screen slowly off. And you can use a tool like this to help it along if you want, just make sure not to stick it in too far as you go around. You really just wanna stick in just a tiny bit. And this can kinda of happen here with the iPhone 12 especially, and I think the 13, where the actual screen will separate from this little like bracket here, but we can just help it along. And I'll just put this back in the little holder here and we can use one of these to just keep the screen open for us. Now we're just gonna take this off, which is covering the battery connector and the screen connector. And then you could take a plastic spudger like this and just pop up the battery connector here. So you wanna do this first thing. You don't wanna disconnect the screen and stuff like that while the battery's still plugged in. That can cause all sorts of problems. So we can pop up the two screen FPCs here as well. And then we need to take off this little shield here. And we just need to disconnect this one right here. And then we can take off our screen. And right after we're gonna come over here to the front facing camera and sensors and just pop a little protective film over each of them. Just make sure you don't cover up the frame because we're gonna need to clean the frame from the dirt and glue that's over there. 
So just place them a little bit like that. And here is the original touch IC that we need to pull off of this and put onto the other screen. These frames get like extremely nasty. So we wanna clean up all of the leftover dirt and adhesive in there. You can also get under this stuff with like a little razor blade, like the square razor blades. But you really, really want this to be as clean as possible. Just to make sure that like water resistant seal there makes a really nice seal on the frame. And this is where this frame glue remover can come in handy. I find that cleaning the actual adhesive itself is better without this, but this can come in handy at the end here where we need to actually clean up the remaining crap on the frame. So this stuff is pretty strong and you really don't need it to be dripping all over the phone. I just get enough on your Q-tip to go in there. And then I'll come in finally with a dry Q-tip and clean the remainder. So you can see we have this frame nice and clean. There's no residue left. That's exactly what we want. The fumes of this stuff are definitely no good. So now we just wanna remove this whole assembly here to put onto the other screen. So we just gotta take out a few tri-wing screws here and then the two Phillips head screws here. And this whole thing should sort of pop out and fold downwards. And now we're gonna to wanna to use hot air station to just heat up this adhesive a little bit from the front. So I'm just gonna heat this here. I'll set my hot air station to like 150, 50% air speed, and I'm just going to heat this up slowly. Nothing too hot. Just wanna warm it up to soften the adhesive. All right, so this little bit just popped out here with little effort, and we'll just get under here and sort of pull up gently on this as well. And we can also gently pull up here, and then this whole assembly comes out. Now I'm gonna put this sharp sort of scrapey tool on my BGA tool here. And we're gonna use 300 Celsius, 60% airspeed. And we're gonna heat up this IC and start scraping away at the underfill here, just like this on all sides. So we're all good there. And then we're just gonna use a tool like this to just sort of poke at the underfill under the chip as we heat it up to remove it. So we'll just add a little flux around just to promote the flow of solder and we can just go up to like 350 and we're just gonna heat up the IC while just sort of poking at the underfill. And there we go, got that off. So this and the flex is all we need from the old screen. And I'm gonna go transfer this over to a little chip holder. All right, we'll just add some flux. I'm gonna go to 275. Now we just need to gently scrape the underfill from the chip. You don't have to be aggressive with this. Just gentle scraping will suffice. So now we can add some flux and we can come in and combine some leaded solder with any remaining solder on there. And we can grab a little piece of wick and then we can just snag all of these up there. Perfect. So let's clean this all off and let's get this thing over to the reball. All right, so we're gonna reball this touch IC. Hopefully the bent up stencil here won't cause us too many problems. So as usual, when using a solder paste here, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of solder paste on the spatula thing and we're just gonna dry it off and dab it on the clean room wipe. And then under the microscope here, we're just gonna line up the stencil and I'll hold it down with my fingers to begin with and just spread out the solder paste. And I'll take a Kim wipe and just clean above it, just like that. And then we can hold it down with the tweezers, like this. We're gonna go at 50% airspeed, 330. And I'm just gonna do indirect heat right now on the left side, bottom left corner, until we start seeing the solder balls form. And then we can start to move across the IC. I removed the hot air, just leaving it for two seconds here. All right, now we could poke it out. I'll just throw a bit of flux on here across the chip and we can just reflow these one more time here. Make them nice and shiny and centered. That looks perfect to me. Just let it cool down a tiny bit. I don't want this thing to be super hot. We don't want to shock the chip with alcohol, but I do want to get this cleaned. So there's the nicely reballed touch I see that we can get onto the new screen. So let me put down a few clean room wipes and let's get the new screen over here. So for the new screen, we're just gonna use low, low temperature, 100 degree Celsius hotter. And what we wanna do is lift this up. So I'm gonna just get this started here. You have to be really careful with this because 
it's a new screen. You don't want to destroy the LCD. You can see actually the one I just took off the IC from. I was not like trying to be careful with this one and you can see what happens to the LCD when you apply heat. So the original one was already broken, but here obviously we care because it's a new screen. So in this case, I'm just going to take my little spatula thing here and just start peeling up on this flex. And we can even grab some alcohol on the little spatula thing. And we want to remove the glue from underneath here very carefully, releasing the glue. Cool. So this is nice and lifted up now. And we can slot under here a nice thick bit of metal. And you can see on the new screen with this transferable IC, they have a nice little heat shield below here. But honestly, I still don't like trust this and I don't want to take any chances. And I'm just gonna put this nice thick bit of metal in between the screen and the IC we need to replace. And then I'm just gonna grab this like heavy metal thing here to place the other side of the stencil on. So we're kind of like elevating the IC from the screen. And you can see here, there's a nice amount of space between the, the new screen and where we're gonna be applying heat. So the idea is just to shield as much as possible the new LCD from any heat that we apply with the hot air. So now I'll just peel this sticker off here. All right, so I've got this whole thing nice and taped up and separated from the LCD with the nice metal plate in between. So this should give us a, a little bit of breathing room as far as heat goes, but we still want to be really careful. So I'm gonna use 200 Celsius here and we can just peel this sticker off here. The low temperature heat just kind of helps get this adhesive off. And we can just clean this with some isopropyl. So we've got a little resistor here we need to remove. We're just gonna go to 200 just to preheat the whole little flex here. Get some flux on here. Just getting it nice and preheated. And then I'll boost to 320. And we can get that off of there. And they have these little like pre-made solder balls here, but I like to clean these up in favor of the reballed chip. It's not difficult to reball that I see and I much prefer even solder balls versus the ones with the resistor. They're just not the same size. So just mixing in leaded, gonna snag all of this nice and clean. Now we can press down, make sure the chip is nice and lined up. Just getting it nice and preheated with 200. And then we can boost up to 350 here and try to quickly get this thing reflowed. Cool, that's good, that's all we need. And a lot of that heat did not go on the screen, which is great. The screen is warm, but it shouldn't have damaged it because we have this nice big shield in between here. All right, so I got all of the capped on tape off and stuff and we can clean this up with some alcohol. And I can wipe, gonna press down on the flex cable here just to sort of adhere it back to the screen as much as possible. We can also pull off this whole plastic thing here. And now we want to transfer this whole sensor assembly back onto the screen. So let's go into the microscope and put that back on. So we can just start by aligning this here. Then we have this and finally this piece here. And you can kind of bend this down a little bit just to keep it in place. So it's not trying to pull itself out. And then finally we can put this back down and screw in the screws we took out. All right, so we've got this screwed back in. And now let's see what happens when we pop this back in the phone as is. All right, so I've got the screen clipped in here and we can just pop in the battery now. And let's turn on the phone and see what kind of settings we have here. So you can see we have true tone. We have display listed as unknown here. And it says unable to determine if it's a genuine part or not. And this is where our V1SC is going to come in handy. So I'm just going to pop off the board we have on here. And we're going to pop on the 12 through 15 True Tone board. And then we can plug the V1SC into the computer. And it's going to start up here. And I'll open the JCID app on my computer. So now we can go to repair fitting over here. And we're going to wait. Oh, it looks like it's upgrading the device. As you can see, we're getting an upgrade on the screen. It's just updating the firmware of the programmer. So I'll let it do its thing. Cool. And now that it's done updating, it's starting up again. All right, so I'm going to select iPhone 12 from the drop down here. And just to see, we can connect the original screen to the connector here. And then if we go back over to the computer, 
we can click read. And obviously, because the touch IC has moved, we won't be able to read the data for that, but we'll be able to see the display IC serial here. So I'm just going to copy this and I'll just pop it in a notepad file here. So we have that. And I just want this to be able to compare. So we can come over here again and just say quit online by pressing the on off button. And then we can pop the screen off. And now we can take the new screen and pop this on. And then let's go over to the computer and let's say connect. And we can go to iPhone 12 read. And here we have the serial numbers being read from the new screen. The serial number from the display needs to match the serial number from the touch IC here. And you can see the data we just read from the old screen here matches the touch IC, which makes sense, right? Because the serial number from the display that we just read from the original one is matching the original touch IC as well. So what we want to do, we want to grab this and paste it in here instead. So we want these to match. And we're going to say right tick option here. And we'll say right third party screen. Confirm. And you can see it's writing. And you can see it's completed. So now if we click read, we can see these now are matching, which is good. We need this display IC serial and this touch IC serial to match. So now if we go back over here, we can press the on off here to quit. And let's put it back on the phone and see what we get. And let's boot the phone. And now if we go to parts and service history here, we can see here now that the unknown display notification is gone. And that's because the true tone of serial number matches the serial number of the screen. We've also got a battery service notification here, but we'll address that in a separate video. There are plenty of videos going over how to reassemble the phone. I'm gonna leave this open because I'm gonna be doing another video where I go over how to replace the battery without having notifications as well. But anyways, hope that was an interesting video. Thank you to Apple and other companies who decide it's really cool to serialize the parts on the phone and marry them to the motherboard. Really awesome. Thank you. Very cool. It makes the entire process stupid difficult now. We have to do reballing for a touch IC and put it on the new screen. But I hope this video was helpful for anyone who's up to the task. And for anyone else, I hope it was at least somewhat interesting. <laughs> anyways, I appreciate you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.